everybody, it's Brynn from Borage Capital again, and I am back to do more cooking. This is literally my favorite thing that I get to do during the week, so thank you so much for tuning into our videos. We are just so happy that we can still connect with you guys even though we're not coming to school. Today we're going to be making one of my most favorite things. It's just so simple, but is seriously such a great addition to tacos, enchiladas, soups, stews, so many things go great with pickled onions. So you've probably eaten pickles before. Pickles are actually pickled cucumbers. The same process that we're gonna go through today with onions is how pickles are made. So you can really do this with any vegetable. Some might be better than others. So pickled radishes, pickled beets, cucumbers, like I said, onions. It's a great thing to do if you have vegetables that are about to go bad. Instead of tossing them and contributing to food waste, you can actually pickle them and it works as a preserving mechanism and it's just really awesome and tastes great and they will last in your fridge for a really long time. Okay, you might be thinking, Miss Bryn, last time we got to make pizza from scratch. Why are we making pickled onions right now? That's not that exciting. Well, I'm here to tell you that pickled onions are arguably as exciting as pizza. Don't believe me? You just wait a couple days and I think you will. So before we get to do any cooking, this is 4-H Capital. And at 4-H Capital, we do science. Maybe you have made a volcano before using vinegar and baking soda. And you're like, what is vinegar doing in the kitchen? Well, you're about to find out. But first, we're just going to explore the chemical reaction between vinegar and baking soda and discuss why it happens. What we need to do first is talk about a little something called pH and the pH scale. This is our pH scale. Our numbers 0 to 6.9 are going to be considered acidic. So that means that they're going to be kind of harsher and maybe sour or bitter, they might kind of burn in your mouth when you eat them. Think of things like lemons, limes, other citrus fruits are gonna be more on the acidic side. Seven is our neutral spot, so water has a pH of seven. If you're kind of thinking, is this basic or acidic, think of water and then think of how that thing tastes in comparison to water. As we move from eight to 14, those things are gonna be basic. 14 is gonna be the most basic thing. Things that are basic are your sweeter fruits like watermelon. Those are gonna be more basic and they're very sweet and sugary. I wanna do a quick experiment with vinegar and baking soda. And the reason that there is a chemical reaction is because one of those things is an acid and the other thing is very basic. And so when they meet, they create a chemical reaction that you guys can do at home if you have the materials. If not, you can watch it on my screen. It's pretty cool. You're gonna love it. So let's first talk about baking soda. Do you guys know if baking soda is basic or acidic? Go ahead and give it a guess and then I'll tell you. So baking soda is basic. So we'll put her right here. And then our other ingredient is vinegar. You can probably figure it out based on where baking soda was, but is vinegar acidic or basic? It's acidic. Let's move on to our science experiment. Like I said, you guys can follow along at home if you have the materials and are willing to get sciencey. Um, so we're going to be using just one teaspoon of distilled white vinegar and one half teaspoon of baking soda. So I have my distilled white vinegar right here and it is smelly and so that kind of tells me that like yeah this could be an acid and it is we know this and then I have baking soda so I'm going to start by getting my teaspoon and I'm going to pour the white vinegar into the teaspoon and dump it in as you can see nothing's happening just vinegar now I'm gonna grab my half teaspoon and get some baking soda and let's watch what happens. Can you guys hear that? You can see it. So cool. Wow. It's still reacting. I can still hear it kind of 
sizzling. That is just a very basic chemical reaction. Like I said before, if you've ever made a volcano or you want to do more science, always, and make a volcano, you can add red food dye to this and it won't change the reaction. And you can mess around with the ratio. So if you wanna see maybe using more baking soda and more vinegar, like what kind of reaction that makes, you can play around and that's what science is, right? Kind of testing our hypotheses. So that could be a really fun thing to do outside of the kitchen. Definitely probably do it outside because it can get pretty messy. Okay, you're probably thinking, all right, Miss Bryn, we get it. Vinegar, baking soda, they react. There's a chemical reaction, sweet. What does this have to do with cooking? Well, in today's lesson, we are mixing apple cider vinegar and it will make the onion more sweet. And when you add the pickled onions to things like tacos or your soups and stews, it will brighten the flavors in that dish. It's pretty cool. And I think your taste buds are gonna be really excited to try this. Enough science talk, let's get started. Grab your aprons and let's make some pickled onions. All right, today's materials, we will need a knife. And since we are using a knife, you will also need an adult to help you cut our onions. You will need a cutting board. We have a mason jar. If you don't have a mason jar, but you have Tupperware that is sealable, use that. You need an onion. If you have a small red onion, that's great. You can use the full one. If you have a really big red onion, definitely cut it in half. Apple cider vinegar, or if you are working with white vinegar, red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, whatever you have will work. White sugar, kosher salt, and then our measuring cups, we have a half cup. We need measuring spoons. And then I'm going to be making the mixture in this glass because it has a little spout. So it'll pour nice and easily into our jar. I said it is super important to have an adult helping you cut your onion. Knives are very sharp. So we just wanna make sure that you all are being super, super safe. All right, we are going to start by mixing up our pickling mixture. To start with our apple cider vinegar, we are going to measure a half a cup. If you have different kinds of vinegars in your pantry, give them each a smell and see if you can tell the differences between them. Next, we are going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt. We are going to add one tablespoon of sugar. So the tablespoon is the big one. And the sugar just works to sweeten up the onion. Looking at this and I can see all of the salt and sugar kind of settled down at the bottom. Still smells very vinegary. So now we get to mix. And when we mix our different ingredients, we're making a vinegar mixture, but we're also making in science what's called a solution. This really small whisk, and I think it's really cute. So I'm gonna use this to make my solution. If you don't have a tiny whisk, which is definitely okay, you can use a fork and that will work just as well. So mix. So you can see it's kind of changing color. You can't really tell what is sugar and what is salt anymore. So, great news. I can't see any sugar or salt particles. That is good to go. This is my onion. I think it's small enough that I can use the full thing to fit into my mason jar. But like I said, if you have like a really big red onion, you'll probably need to cut it in half depending on the size of your mason jar. But if you do want to use the whole onion, you can just double the vinegar and sugar and salt solution to make sure all of it gets covered by the liquid. So students, I don't know if you've ever been around somebody cutting an onion before, but it makes eyes water so badly Every time I cut an onion, I just cry. So to solve that, I have these really cool onion goggles that I wear when I cut onions because otherwise my eyes burn so badly. It looks really silly, but you'll thank me later, I promise. I'm going to start by cutting this in half. This is a really fun time. We get to peel the onion. I actually find this to be rather satisfying. 
if you have brothers or sisters who are making these with you, you guys can race to see who can peel their half the fastest. <music> So now I'm going to start with one onion. I want to cut the stem out because we do not want to eat that. Yuck! And then I'm going to cut the other stem off. And now she's ready to be sliced. So the thinner we slice this, the better. It will just make the onion, once it gets pickled, a lot more floppy. Get it as thin as you can. Same thing with the other side. So my onions are thinly sliced. I'm just going to break them apart. This is something that kids, you guys can definitely participate in since you didn't get to do the cutting. Right, team, this looks like we are ready. We are going to just pile them in our jar. We are going to take our jar of onions, beautiful. We are going to pour our liquid over the top. And pushing mine down and I can see that the bottom ones are submerged, but not everything on top is. Fear not, we have more vinegar and I've got nothing but time. So I'm just gonna mix up some more and then I'll pour that over to make sure that the rest of the onions are covered. So I just quickly mixed up some more vinegar and sugar and salt and I'm gonna pour that once again over the onions. Oh yeah, much better. So now all of my onions are submerged in the liquid and they will all have the opportunity to pickle. At this point, we're done. Can you believe it? Now the only ingredient left is time. So we're gonna put the lid on. You guys can stick this in your refrigerator. It needs at least 30 minutes to let the vinegar and the onions do their thing. But the longer you leave it, you'll see a change. But you'll also notice a change in flavor. All right guys, I'm gonna go stick this jar in my refrigerator. Tomorrow I plan on using them for my family's Taco Tuesday. I'm super excited about that. I hope you enjoy your pickled onions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please share what you end up doing with these. If you end up making them, send pictures, show us what you're putting them on. We can learn from you guys just as much as you guys can learn from us. So we're very excited to see everything that you guys are doing. And once again, thank you so much for following 4-H at home.